Chapter 2 Margaret This morning there was a knock at the door. I could tell by who it was by the way they knocked, and I heard them coming across the bridge. They stepped on the only board that makes any noise. They always step on it. I've never been able to figure this out. I have thought a great deal about why they always step on that same board, how they cannot miss it, and now they stood outside my door knocking. I did not acknowledge their knocking because I just wasn't interested. I didn't want to see them. I knew what they would be about and did not care for it. Finally, they stopped knocking and went back across the bridge, and they, of course, stepped on the same board. A long board with the nails not lined up right, built years ago and no way to fix it, and they, then they were gone, and the board was silent. I can walk across the bridge hundreds of times without stepping on that board, but Margaret always steps on it. Chapter 3 My Name I guess you're kind of curious as to who I am, but I am one of those who do not have a regular name. My name depends on you. Just call me whatever, whatever's in your mind. If you're thinking about something that happened a long time ago, Somebody asked you a question and you didn't know the answer. That is my name. Perhaps it was raining very hard. That is my name. Or somebody wanted you to do something and you did it. Then they told you what you did was wrong. Sorry for the mistake and you had to do something else. That is my name. Perhaps it was a game that you played when you were a child or something that came idly into your mind when you were old and sitting in a chair near the window. That is my name. Or you walked someplace. There were flowers all around. That is my name. Perhaps you stared into a river, and there was somebody near you who loved you. They were about to touch you. You could feel this before it happened. Then it happened. That is my name. Or you heard someone calling from a great distance. Their voice was almost an echo. That is my name. Perhaps you were lying in bed, almost ready to go to sleep, and you laughed at something, a joke unto yourself, a good way to end the day. That is my name. Or you were eating something good and for a second forgot what you were eating, but still went on, knowing it was good. Perhaps it was around midnight and the fire tolled like a bell inside the stove. That is my name. Or you felt bad when she said that thing to you? She could have told it to someone else. Somebody who was more familiar with her problems. That is my name. Perhaps the trout swam in the pool, but the river was only eight inches wide, and the moon shone on eye death, and the watermelon fields glowed out of proportion. Dark and the moon seemed to rise from every plant. That is my name. And I wish Margaret would leave me alone. Chapter 4 Fred A little while after Margaret left, Fred came by. He wasn't involved with the bridge. He only used it to get to my shack. He had nothing else to do with the bridge. He only walked across it to get to my place. He just opened the door and came in. Hi, he said. What's up? Nothing much, I said. Just working away here. I just came from the watermelon works, Fred said. I want you to go down there tomorrow morning with me. I want to show you something about the plank press. All right, I said. Good, he said. I'll see you tonight at dinner down at Ideth. I hear Pauline's going to cook dinner tonight. That means we'll have something good. I'm a little tired of Al's cooking. The vegetables are always overdone, and I'm tired of carrots, too. If I eat another carrot this week, I'll scream. Yeah, Pauline's a good cook, I said. I wasn't really too much interested in food at the time. I wanted to get back to my work, but Fred is my buddy. We've had a lot of good times together. Fred had something strange looking sticking out of the pocket of his overalls. I was curious about it. It looked like something I had never seen before. What's that in your pocket, Fred? Oh, I found it today coming through the woods up from the watermelon works. I don't know what it is myself. I've never seen anything like it before. What do you think it is? He took it out of his pocket and handed it to me. I didn't know how to hold it. I tried to hold it like you would hold a flower and a rock at the same time. How do you hold it, I said. 
I don't know. I don't know anything about it. It looks like one of those things In Boyle and his gang used to dig up down at the Forgotten Works. I've never seen anything like it, I said, and gave it back to Fred. I'll show it to Charlie, he said. Maybe Charlie will know. He knows about everything there is. Yeah, Charlie knows a lot, I said. Well, guess I better be going, Fred said. He put the thing back in his overalls. Oh, see you at dinner, he said. Okay. Fred went out the door. He crossed the bridge without stepping on that board Margaret always steps on and couldn't miss if the bridge were seven miles wide. Chapter 5. Charlie's Idea After Fred left, it felt good to get back to writing again, to dip my pen in watermelon seed ink and write upon these sheets of sweet-smelling wood made by Bill down at the shingle factory. Here is a list of the things that I will tell you about in this book. There's no use saving it until later. I might as well tell you now where you're at. 1. Eye Death. A good place. 2. Charlie, my friend. 3. The tigers and how they lived and how beautiful they were and how they died and how they talked to me while they ate my parents and how I talked back to them and how they stopped eating my parents, though it didn't help my parents any. Nothing could help them by then. And we talked for a long time, and one of the tigers helped me with my arithmetic. Then they told me to go away while they finished eating my parents, and I went away. I returned later that night to burn the shack down. That's what we did in those days. 4. The Statue of Mirrors 5. Old Chuck 6. The Long Walks I Take at Night Sometimes I stand for hours at a single place without hardly moving. I've had the wind stop in my hand. 7. The Watermelon Works 8. Fred, my buddy. Nine, the baseball park. Ten, the aqueduct. Eleven, Doc Edwards and the school teacher. Twelve, the beautiful trout hatchery at Ideth and how it was built and the things that happened there. Uh, it's a swell place for dancing. <laughs> Thirteen, the tomb crew, the shaft, and the shaft gallows. Fourteen, a waitress. Fifteen, Al, Bill, and others. 16, the town. 17, the sun and how it changes. Very interesting. 18, in Boyle and that gang of his and the place where they used to dig the forgotten works and all the terrible things they did and what happened to them and how quiet and nice things are around here now that they're all dead. 19, conversations and things that happen here day to day. Work, baths, breakfast, and dinner. Twenty, Margaret and that other girl who carried the lantern at night and never came close. Twenty-one, all of our statues and the places where we bury our dead so that they're forever with light coming out of their tombs. Twenty-two, my life lived in watermelon sugar. There must be worse lives. Twenty-three, Pauline. She is my favorite. You'll see. 24, and this the 24th book written in 171 years. Last month, Charlie said to me, You don't seem to like making statues or doing anything else. Why don't you write a book? The last one was written 35 years ago. It's about time somebody wrote another book. Then he scratched his head and said, Gee, I remember it was written 35 years ago, but I can't remember what it was about. There used to be a copy of it in the sawmill. Do you know who wrote it, I, I said? No, he said, but he was like you. He didn't have a regular name. I asked him what the other books were about, the 23 previous ones, and he said that he thought one of them was about owls. Yeah, it was about owls. And then there was a book about pine needles. Very boring. And then there was one about the forgotten works. You know, theories on how it got started and where it came from. The guy who wrote the book, his name was Mike. He took a long trip into the Forgotten Works. He went in maybe a hundred miles and was gone for weeks. He went beyond those high piles we can see on clear days. He said that there were piles beyond those that were even higher. He wrote a book about his journey into the Forgotten Works, and it wasn't a bad book, a lot better than the books we find in the Forgotten Works. Those are terrible books. 
He said he was lost for days and came across things that were two miles long and green. He refused to furnish any other details about them, even in his book. Just said they were two miles long and green. <laughs> That's his tomb down by that statue of a frog. I, knew that, I know that tomb well, I said. He has blonde hair and he's wearing a pair of rust-colored overalls. Yeah, that's him, Charlie said. 